I want you to imagine for just a minute that you're a 17 year old young man and that you're sitting in a classroom, high school classroom, it's your last month of your last year in high school and this guest teacher comes in that's going to do a little bit of poetry. And I want you to imagine that you're sitting there and you didn't expect to be engaged, you didn't expect really to be that interested, but you heard this guest speaker talk about a poet named William Stafford and you heard him talk about a particular poem and uh, it went like this. It said, if you don't know the kind of person I am and I don't know the kind of person you are, then a pattern that others made may prevail in the world and following the wrong God home, we may miss our star. For there are many a small betrayal in the mind, a shrug that lets the fragile sequence break. Sending with shouts, sending with shouts, the terrible airs of childhood storming out to play through the broken dikes. And as elephants parade holding each elephant's tail, but if one wanders, the circus won't find the park. I call it cruel. I call it cruel and maybe the root of all cruelty to know what occurs, but to not recognize the fact. So I appeal to a shadowy voice, to a remote region in all who talk, though we could fool each other, though we could fool each other, we should consider, lest the mutual parade of our lives get lost in the dark, for it is important that awake people be awake, or a breaking line may discourage them back to sleep. The signals we give to each other, yes, no, or maybe, should be clear, should be clear. The darkness around us is deep. Well, that poem was done for this young man, and he stopped. See, the guest speaker was yours truly. He stopped. And he asked me a little bit about the poet. And we began to talk about how William Stafford was a CEO, a conscientious objector in World War II. This young man was intent. He looked at me and he said, so that means he was a coward, right? And I looked back at him. And I knew it was a serious statement. And I said to him, I said, well, it's complicated. Sometimes courage requires us to fight and sometimes courage actually asks us to not fight. And he was displaying that second kind. So a little bit later after the class was done, I talked to the teacher and I asked her, I said, <clears throat> there seemed to be something very intense about this young man. And she told me a couple of things. She told me uh, that he had come or did come from a difficult family background. She didn't tell me any details, but that seemed to speak for itself. And she also told me that he had already signed up. And as soon as he was of the age that he could leave, he was already signed up or pre-signed up for the Marine Corps. And that he was going to be going probably to a war zone in Iraq within the year. I understood at that moment why that young man was so intensely connected, I think, to that poem. I understood that. That is the value of great poetry for me. That kind of connection, that kind of invitation to deeper thought and thinking. I don't know what that young man was thinking. I can't read his mind, but I can only imagine that that William Stafford poem, A Ritual to Read to Each Other, still is resonating somewhere deep inside him. Thank you for listening. Until next time and next.